Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first part of the two-part series on how to make a river shader in Unity using its shader graph in the high-definition rendering pipeline. So what I mean with a river shader is that I want to make a shader, a water shader that actually follows the shape of our mesh. So if you have a nice curved river, it actually follows the actual curvature of that river instead of just going into one single direction that is often found in tutorials. So a water shader is actually quite common on YouTube, but I'm gonna go and do my own take on this. So I'm gonna add a little bit more advanced features in there uh, in the first video. And in the second video, we're gonna go more deeper into those advanced details like blur, for example, um, maybe some caustics and um, refractions in there as well. But the first part is going to be the basics. So we, we will have a pretty okay looking water, actually a, a quite good looking water. But it's not quite there yet but you will see and you will find out so how we're going to do this is the first video is going to be chopped up in several parts as you can see in the chapters we first going to start with a little bit more like a uh, basic understanding of how to abuse uvs in order to get the uh, the goal that we want to have and then we're going to look into unity and how to make a mesh using pro builder and then we're going to dive into the shader where we're going to do like depth testing so we can actually have like a depth gradient in there normal map uh, creation and also abusing again the UVs and the normal maps to create a very good looking water. So let's first dive into Maya. So as you can see, I've got a mesh here. I got a pretty looking river. This is my river. And you could, and the first thing that you'll notice, right? If you look at the UVs right now, is that they're all going in one single direction. They're all going in one single direction. And this is exactly what I don't want to have, right? <laughs> So this this is fine for like a large scale body like a lake or an ocean, but if for a river, this simply does not cut it. So how do we actually get that our UV follows the actual curvature of the mesh in this direction? Well, we can actually do that quite easily once you know the trick, and that is actually get your UV map here. So the first thing that we need to think about is in which direction we want our water to flow. So you have to keep in mind that that UV space uses two axes. So this one is the X X and up top here is the Y X. So the question now is uh, in which direction do we want our water to flow? It's either X or either Y. So if you're smart, you'll pick one of those two. If you make it diagonal, it's going to cause, it's not cause issues, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So in this case, I'm going to say, you know what? I want my water to flow on the X X alone. So what I can do right now is look here. This is my start here. If I start the mesh, this one over here, that's this one part over here. These two are connected, those are the same. So I know that, okay, this should probably be at the start, right? So I'm gonna grab my UV shell here and I'm gonna rotate it in the actual angle. So it's like facing in the X direction over here. And you can see that they actually line up pretty okay now. So how do we get the actual bending of the UVs? Well, we could just make it straight, right? So if I just grab it over here, make one a little bit more straight here. This one here as well. I'm just going to rotate it and I'm just going to push it down. And you'll start seeing the actual deformation of, like happening already in the UVs. And that's what we want to do. Of course, this is not perfect, but this is just to get the basic idea of how it actually works. I'm going to make it a little bigger here so you get a little bit more of understanding. There we go. See, you, now you can actually see that they actually follow the actual curvature of our mesh. And this is what we want to have. But as you can also see, right, we have a very harsh angle in here the water will just like jump like from one angle to another angle i don't really like that so how can we make it a little bit smoother it's actually pretty simple we just grab it the actual um edge here and we just bevel it a little bit so we go to my uh, toolkit over here if i bevel it with two segments you see you get a pretty okay looking corner so it's no longer that harsh but you get a nice smooth transition and again, the, the more you have, the more you add, the smoother it's going to be. But for now, this is fine. So let's get into Unity and let's start making our mesh. So this is the scene that I've made for this video. It's a pretty basic scene that has a ditch, I suppose, that we're going to use for the actual water to flow through and some stuff around so to, just to make it look prettier. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make my mesh, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start all the way at the top and I'm going to go to my tools and then Pro Builder, 
probable window. I'm gonna make a new shape. I'm just gonna drag it here. It's gonna be completely skewed. That's okay. I'm just gonna reset my transformations here. I probably wanna make it a little bit wider, but that's okay. There we go. Now I'm just gonna rotate my actual mesh. Let's do it in the center. Okay. Oh, if I can actually get it to rotate, there we go. I just want to make sure it's actually inside the mount, inside the ground here, and that's it. So what, what I want to do here is I just want to extrude out my actual edges here. So I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to go to my extrude edge. I'm, I'm going to set my distance here to zero so it doesn't jump up to a certain direction. So I'm going to hit extrude edge. And then I'm just going to pull it out. Now what I'm looking for here is that my center edge here is actually in the middle of my mode. I'm also going to rotate a little bit so we start looking at pushing towards the angle that we actually want to have. It'll probably be a little bit lower but it's okay. Again I'm just going to rotate it and I'm just going to see if I can get my center line, center edge following the contours of my actual river. Okay so we now get to the actual drop off here. So I'm going to hit extrude, I'm going to push it down. And I don't care that like if like this massive overlap here, like you don't really care. I'm just gonna push it a little bit. Oh, wrong button, sorry. And rotate it again. And again, I'm gonna hit extrude. I'm just gonna grab it. In this case, I'm just gonna push it really far because we can always add stuff, right? That's the easy part. And again, extrude edge here. There we go. Even further, probably. Let's do it again, extrude edges. I'm just trying to like flow, follow the curvature of my mesh here, of my, of my terrain. There we go. This is pretty okay. So it, it, you can see right again, we have like really sharp angles over here. So we kind of want to avoid that. I think we're going to move this one a little bit to the right here. So we get a nice extra twirl in there. There we go. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to hit bevel. I'm going to bevel here. I'm going to hit probably four or five. I want it to be nice and big. Let's do six even. And then again, we can always add an edge, edge loop here as well. If I can find it, it's always so annoying. There you go. I'm just going to move it a little bit here. So get a little more control of the actual. And again, I'm going to hit bevel. I'm going to do the same thing here. It's an edge loop. There we go. And bevel. There we go. And if you want, you could even add more subdivisions to this. But for now, I think this is quite okay. Let's go here. So we also want to have one here, like a bevel edge here, maybe a little bit not that strong. So you got a nice like ramp almost, like a nice curvature there. That's pretty okay. Nice. So we now have our river mesh, right? But like we said before, the next step is actually to UV this properly. So I'm gonna go into my UV editor over here and you'll see this, right? This is not really helpful. So I'm gonna do here, I'm actually gonna close it again. I'm gonna grab all my faces, double click here. No, almost UV editor, convert to manual, planar, fit UVs, and there they are. In this case, right, this is the start and this is the end. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before in my, but now I'm just gonna do it manual. So let's just speed this up a little bit so you don't have to wait for this. And there we go. So I mainly focus on the middle line here. So that's kind of straight. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, right? It just has to be straight-ish. That's perfectly fine. So let's close this. And that's the actual mesh done. So we can now move over to the next part. So let's start making the shader. In this case, all I'm going to do here is just going to right click here, create shader, HD render pipeline, lit shader graph. I'm going to call this my YouTube river. There you go. Awesome. And while this is selected, I'm going to right click again, create material. This is my river material. So by just doing that, by first clicking on it, it will actually create a material using that shader. So it's a little bit of a shortcut, it helps. One thing to make sure, if, uh, like from the start, is that you turn the surface type to transparent, otherwise it's not gonna work 
at all. So let's open up my shader here. I'm going to double click it and there we go. One small tip, if you hit shift uh, spacebar, you actually maximize the viewport that you're working in. So that actually helps quite a lot. So this is the vertex shader and this is the fragment shader. So vertex means the actual vertices of a mesh and fragment look at it as color, right? And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So let's start by first doing the actual depth testing so we can see how deep we want our water to be, for example. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna first grab my scene depth, which is the actual depth of your scene. That's why it's called scene depth. And I'm gonna grab my camera. Now, what I don't wanna do is I wanna, what I don't wanna do is like to render out the depth way beyond my actual camera. So what a camera has is a thing called a far plane. And that means like how far can a camera actually see and anything beyond that far plane will not get rendered. So this is, this should be my maximum, right? So the far plane is my maximum of how deep do I want to render out my scene. In this case, the camera. Now I'm gonna multiply these. There we go. I'm gonna multiply my scene depth with my far plane. Boom. First part done. <laughs> So let's go to the second part, this is our screen position. So where is our mesh uh, in, on screen? In this case, I'm gonna set it to raw like this. And there we go. Now the screen position here is the output of four nodes or four outputs. In this case, it's RGB alpha. Now I don't care about the actual RGB colors right now because they are colors and I don't wanna use the colors right now. So I'm gonna actually split this into four. So now I can actually access the actual individual components. In this case, what I want to use here is the actual alpha of this. So what I'm going to do here is I want to have something in here that I can actually like manually adjust how deep I want it to be. So I'm going to grab a float here. So I'm going to go to my blackboard, this one over here. If you don't have it, click on the blackboard. I click on the plus, I want to add a float. In this case, what I want to do here is I want to say water depth. Just a simple float here. And I want to add that number to my alpha. So which is added, which is nothing more than actual like plus plus, like we have in math. So also help advice here, if you click on the actual arrow, it will actually minimize it, which is super helpful. Otherwise you get these like extra outputs that you're not using, it just gets confusing. And also if, if you're like me, you will try to keep it as tidy as possible. <laughs> there we go, okay. So next step would be to actually sub subtract the value of here from our actual bond multiply. So I'm gonna drag in my multiply here to A and my add into B, there we go. So now if I were to actually put this into my base color, I'm gonna hit again shift spacebar. I'm gonna save my shader, I'm gonna back to my, you know, my scene here and we pretty much have nothing, right? because it's not actually using the material, and now it should. Assigning it would probably be helpful as well. So you can now see, right, we, only have all, we already have like black and white gradient over here, so if I go back down here, I can now adjust my depth. But it's like super harsh, right? It's either black or white, and in between here, there's like this colorization here that I don't wanna have. So we need to do a couple of things here, right? First off, that we need to make sure is that our values can go higher than a certain range. I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna clamp it. So that means that the value cannot go higher than one, it cannot get lower than zero. And I'm gonna put that into my base color. Now when I save it, you probably won't see that much difference, but it, it, it is there. Give it a second here, there we go. Next up, what I wanna be able to do is like to make it a little bit less harsh, right? So I wanna be able to control like the length of my gradient if that makes sense. So I'm gonna add here, in between, I'm gonna add a multiply. So I'm gonna add multiply here, gonna do it like this, and it's gonna go feed back into there. I'm gonna click on the arrow again, there we go. So what I wanna do here is I wanna have a value here that can actually control the strength or intensity of my depth. So I'm gonna call this a float again. So I'm gonna go and say water, depth, let's call this uh, intensity, because that sounds more epic than strength, intensity. There we go. What I also wanna do here is I wanna make sure, I click here, oh, make it a little bigger, 
if you click on a node here, you can actually adjust what kind of type it is. In this case, the default value here is zero. What I want to do here is actually set it to a slider where the default value here is zero, the minimum is zero, maximum is one. I set the default here to 0 0.5. And again, I'm going to click on my graphics spectrum. There we go. Because we don't need it that often, so I'm going to, I'm going to big fan of just hiding it all the time that I can. Okay, it's compiling it. There we go. Let's give it a second and now we can actually adjust it a little bit more now we have a little bit more control over the actual uh, strength and depth of our scene and now i can actually get some really interesting results here so if i make it a little bit less deep you know you almost get like a foggy idea right you can see you get like a ground fog almost which is really cool which will be the next video <laughs> So we now have our depth, right? That's, a, that's already a good start. So we can now just say, okay, how deep my water should actually be. And again, the, the strength here will just say, okay, how strong, like the, the contrast almost. So I get a nice murky water here. I like that. Okay. So, so we know, so only thing we've done now is we, we just got the depth of our scene that we just put it into our actual albedo color. And that's pretty much it. Let's just reorganize this a little bit better. There we go. But one thing I don't like about this is that the gradient here is very uniform, right? And that's very odd for anything organic. You would expect a little bit more like distortion in there. So not that perfect. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna break it up a little bit. So I'm gonna grab all these, gonna move them a little bit to the left. What I wanna do here, I wanna add some noise. So I'm gonna add a gradient noise here. You can, all, you can also use a simple noise. This one is actually a little bit more harsh. Let's compare them actually, to get a better idea. Let's set the same scale. But this one is a little bit softer, right? You can see it's a little bit soft. This one's a little bit harsher. So I'm gonna use the simple noise here. I kind of want to just overlay this with my gradient that we have for my scene depth. So I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna grab a blend node, this one. And I'm just gonna uh, put this one into my blend. I'm gonna grab my clamp and put that into my base. I'm gonna probably gonna leave the overlay. Let's see what happens there. So I'm gonna put this into my output. There we go. And over here. Beautiful. For now, if you look at it, I don't think we'll see that much of a difference because of the scale, because we can't control the scale yet, but I think we get a little bit of a noisy effect here, but we gotta really see it, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a float again. Let's call this the uh, water depth distortion scale. I'm gonna plug it in my scale here. Let's say, let's open up the candy graph inspector. So by default, the value of zero, I'm gonna say 500. I don't know, let's find out. Let's save this. Let's go back to the scene. We can now exit this, access this, what you can, oh, that's actually look much better. So we can already see that you actually get some distortion in here. That's awesome. I also kind of wanted to move though. So right now it's just static, so I kind of wanted to move. But first I actually have control here that we can actually blend the opacity. So let's do that as well real fast. So we're gonna call this water depth distortion. Uh, let's call it intensity as well. Let's, let's use the same naming here. There we go. Again, I'm gonna set this one to a slider. Click on it, slider, and the default, let's put this to 0.5 again. And save. So this should work now. So now we can actually also control the intensity of our noise. So if we go back here, we can now say, okay, no noise, a little bit more, see so you get a little bit more distortion. Just breaks up a little bit more, like it feels a little bit more like actual water, you know? Okay. So how to, how to get this moving, that will be the next step. It's actually really simple once you know about this. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab a tiling and offset mode. This literally does offset <laughs> the UVs. I'm gonna, my output should be in my UV, so this will be the new UV that we're gonna use. And in here, uh, the offset, we're actually gonna do some stuff. So tiling just means like how often will my image um, repeat itself, right? In this case, it's just only once that's okay. And this, in this case, the offset here is the actual offset. So if I now grab a time node, which is literally just time, 
And if I multiply that by a certain value like so that I can control the actual speed of which it should distort. So I'm gonna grab here, I'm just gonna copy paste this real fast. There we go, I'm gonna call this speed. I'm gonna multiply these together. There we go, so it's this one and time. I'm gonna put this into my offset, for, for, for at least for now. And let's have a look what it actually does. Well, it shouldn't do anything, right? Because our default value of speed is set to zero. So let's have a look, right? If we just like put it to one, it's probably going really fucking fast. There we go. 0 0.01, we get a nice offset on both X and Y, right? You can see that because right now it's actually going diagonally like this. And I don't want that. So I, I want to be able to also have this uh, noise going into, into the direction that I want it to go. So what we're going to do here is actually we're going to create a Boolean. I'm going to call this X axis. I'm going to put this one all the way up top. And what I want this one to do is say, or we're moving on the X axis or Y axis. So if, if, if the X axis is true, we're moving on X. If it's false, we're moving on a Y. Now I can actually create a Boolean here that we can actually use. So what I want to do here is I want to create a factor two, right? So this will be my new offset value that takes to X and Y direction. And I'm going to use that one. So this is going to be in my X. I'm going to actually duplicate this again. And this time it's going to be in my Y. So I can actually switch between them. Then I can do is grab my Boolean and we can do a thing called a branch. So it says here true false. So that's just a value, right? So if I put this one in here, so if the axis, X axis is true, then we could put something in here and the output otherwise will be false. I'm going to plug, plug in my X factor two and my true and my Y and my false. And then what we can do then, if it actually can, thank you. Then I'm going to plug this into my UV offset. Again, let's be organized here. A little bit more, there we go. Nice, okay. Let's see what it does, right? So I'm gonna save this and let's see what it does. Give it a second to compile. Oh, you can already see it's only going in one direction. So I'll now turn this off. It's going into the other direction. So X and Y switch, if you wanna call it like that. Absolutely stunning. See how easy it is. Okay, if you look closely, we could probably already see it's actually flowing based on the UV that we have made, but it's really not clear, so. But at least now it's actually a flow. So you can do a little bit more of this as well. You can actually multiply this noise with another noise. We so get a little bit more organic. Um, in this case, I, yeah, you can do it yourself. Um, but for now, it's, at least it's fine. So let's move on, right? So let's call this, let's group this. I'm gonna call this my depth test. So I'm just hitting Ctrl G here, and that just means group it. So let's do our normal maps. The fun part. So I'm gonna create two texture 2Ds. I'm gonna call it my main normal map. And I'm gonna make one more, that's gonna be my secondary normal map. There we go. I'm gonna drag this in here, and there we go. So before we can use them, we need to sample them, which is like, read them. I'm going to hit sample, texture 2D, put it in my texture, that's it. Set the type to normal, duplicate this bad boy, and that one. Okay, nice. So we kind of want to like combine them, right? So blend between them. So I'm going to say normal, blend. I'm going to hit this one and that one, and then I can put them in my normal tangent space, that one. Let's hit save. Now we should actually see a, a change in color right now of our texture, of our shader. Let's see if it actually does that. It does. The reason for this, right, because there is, is no texture assigned to our normal map, so that's why he's gonna complain. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to my materials and then water, I'm gonna drag in my big one and my small one. See the color and the color will be back. It does that because there are no textures assigned, then it's gonna complain. But we can't really see, oh, well, you can see a little bit here, right? But it's gonna be massive. So we need to be able to change the tiling again of our texture. 
Again, I'm going to add a tiling and offset node. I'm going to do two of them actually. So we can actually control them separately. There we go. And I want to create a new factor two so I can do it on both axes. My main normal map tiling and another factor two. It's going to be my secondary normal map loop tiling. I'm just going to drag them in here. I'm going to drag one up there. There we go. Makes a little bit more sense, right? Yep. And it's going to be in the tiling. And the secondary one is going to go into my tiling as well. Okay, let's add one more thing here. That's the smoothness. We, we could do this straight away. So we get a little bit more like a visual cue of what's actually happening. So I'm going to make a float. I'm going to say smoothness. We're going to change it in a little bit, but for now we can actually just use it as a little bit more of like a visual cue of what's actually happening in our scene. Okay. So the texture is going to be weird because our default value of the factor 2 is 0. So we're going to have 0 tiling. But that's okay. Let's do, let's. 25, 25 maybe, and this one, 30 and 30, and then we're gonna add smoothness. And you can already see something happening. Okay, we probably need to make it a little bit bigger. Let's do 50. I can't see anything for some reason. Why aren't you, well, that helps, of course, if I didn't put them into my UV, I apologize. That was a little bit stupid. <laughs> Happens to everyone, I suppose. There we go. That looks much more awful than I expected. Okay. Wow. Beautiful, isn't it? We have a couple of issues, right? As you could probably imagine that you can already see. One, I can actually go higher for my smoothness than, than one, right? You can see it again if I click here. My smoothness can actually exceed one. I really don't want that, so I'm gonna cap it. So I'm gonna go back here to my smoothness. Again, I'm gonna grab my graph inspector. I'm gonna say, I wanna make this a slider. Let's set the default to 0.8 or something like that. That should fix problem number one. What we also kinda wanna have here is, is, is the option to control the actual strength of the normals. So I'm gonna say a normal strength. I'm gonna plug that in here. And I'm gonna redirect this one back in there. So now we need an actual value here, so I'm gonna add a float again. Let's say normal map strength. And plug it in the actual strength. There we go, much better. Let's save this and let's have a look. Like super intense, um, Normal maps can actually cause a lot of issues. Right now, see if this looks a lot better. If you keep a little bit smoother, right? Like 0.4 maybe, let's do 0.3. There we go. So it still looks weird, right? Because we don't have anything in the terms of transparency yet. So that's why it's gonna look a little bit awful because right now it's, it's just being multiplied by white. That doesn't look that pretty, but it actually works pretty okay. Let's make one a little bigger here, maybe like 30. Let's make one 20, but I don't know. I'm just guessing here. This is pretty okay. Okay, so we also kind of want to have these ones to like flow as well, right? That would be uh, kind of cool again. So we're going to go here to my offset and we're going to do the same thing as we did before, like before, right? So we're going to grab the time node again. Where's my time node? I had a time node, time node. So I kind of want to like, like reuse it again. So because I, I've, I have this hunch, I can't prove it, but I'm guessing that if you have more time nodes, it's going to be less and less efficient. So I'm just going to reuse it. So I'm going to create a new float here. That's going to be my water speed. Let's put one a little bit like higher up there. There we go. And again, I'm going to multiply our speed with time. So I'm going to reuse it. There you go. Now, if you like super nitpicky, what you can do is you can actually, if you just have the, most, the line is selected, right click, add redirect node, and you can actually create a little bit, a little bit neater, a little bit more organized. I like, really like that one. There we go. Again, right, we're gonna say here if we're doing on the x axis or not. So I'm gonna actually copy paste these two this one, this one, this one, this one. 
just gonna copy paste that. There we go. So the output here should be in these two. And then we have the same thing as we just had. But now we just copy pasted it. And we're gonna plug these into our offset. Grab them all. Woohoo, I did something. <laughs> and it's gonna go into our offset. Same one. There we go. Okay, let's have a look. Let's save. Let's have a look at our scene. It's gonna compile the shader here. Let's see if we can get some movement in here. Well, of course not, because the default is zero. Let's go here, water speed, and we have flowing water. It's a little faster. Let's have a look, right? Can we actually see? It actually flows around. I hope you can see it. It actually flows around my mesh. I really like that. So a little bit less here. Let's make it a little bit more like a slow moving, slow moving. There we go. Okay, so let's make a life a little bit easier when it comes to like visual clarity. So let's add the actual colors in here before we move on. Because we're not done yet, of course. Um, yeah, let's do it like that. Let's first go into our color here. Because right now the color is still our depth test and I really don't want that. I'm going to add two colors here. So color, let's say shallow, water color. Let's do English spelling because it looks more fancy. And then we have to deep water color. Let's put this in here. There we go. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use a lerp. Now how this works, right? If the T value is zero, then A will be 100% visible. If the T value is one, then B will be 100% visible. Now if you look here again, our shallow parts are black and our deep parts are white. So I'm going to say shallow part here goes into that one, into A and B goes into this. Again, right, um, look as, as alpha, for example, well, as just a value from zero to one. Zero means black, one means white. Then that's how you can actually dis distinguish them. In this case, I'm gonna grab my blend, I'm gonna put that into my T. I'm gonna put this one in my base color. I'm gonna hit save, we should now see a black color. So by default, it's black. It should make it a little bit more readable. There we go. This is a lot more readable. Looks starting to look pretty good. We're not there yet, but you can now see the actual curvature here. That's actually really nice. That's actually really nice. Again, let's test it, right? If you now check uh, X, we're gonna go in this direction. And uh, nope, this direction. Perfect. But what I really don't like is, you can actually probably see it as well if you look closely, is that if you look over here, for example, just keep concentrating your eyes on this part over here. You will see the same texture repeat over and over and over and over again. And I think that's very annoying, right? Especially when in games when it happens, I can just see like, oh, that's pretty lazy, right? So I wanna create a little bit more of a distortion effect on our UVs here. So how we're gonna do that is actually quite simple again. So let's go into, again, to our shader here. So let me just branch this a little, little bit more. So I get a little bit more like a neat. Thank you. Oh, no. That one. Delete. Okay. So how can we do that? Right, we can just use a noise again to actually offset this. But you have to make sure that you actually think in UVs, right? You have to think in UVs. So you can't think in simple values here, but you have to think in UVs. So when we look over here, right, we're gonna add a simple noise again. There you go. So one thing that you have is a skill and again and a UV. So let me first do the actual scale. I'm gonna add a float here. Let's call this a UV distortion scale. Let's plug it in here. Let's plug it in there. Let's say that our default value should be, let's say 500. Let's go nuts, right? 500. That's our default scale. This actually needs a UV, right? So you can't just plug in a number here, but what you actually need is a tiling and UV offset again. So this is an actual UV space. There you go. Perfect. So we now can actually start again, like changing stuff to this. So what I wanna do here again, is actually have a multiply and then multiply it again by time. So we can have a nice offset here. So again, I'm gonna add a float. 
UV distortion speed. So we control that separately. And again, I'm just gonna multiply this by time. Again, I'm just, I'm just gonna reuse time from over here. Time. And again, I'm just gonna add a nice looking redirect node here. To get a little bit more of like an actual organized <laughs> node here. I'm just like super about this. I just wanna get it perfect. It's not possible, of course, but there you go. A little bit neater, there you go. So this value here, we're gonna use it again as a factor. So I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna copy paste this part over here again. So I'm gonna grab these, paste them. Can the out here is X or the Y based on the Boolean that we set. And then we're gonna use that as our UV. So I'm gonna put this into my offset. There we go. And let's make it a little bit more cleaner again. I'm just gonna hide this, put that. There we go. Keep it clean. Makes life a lot easier when you have to find like a buck in here. Okay. So how do we blend these? Well, we're actually just gonna blend them, straight up blend them. So I'm gonna blend. Okay, this is my regular one, right? This is my regular water. I'm gonna grab it in my base. This is gonna be my distortion. Gonna put it in blend. Gonna set the mode to linear light. Don't know why, I don't know how the math works, but this works, right? So let me just put it like that. And these two are gonna go into my offset. Okay, we have one more slot here, that's the opacity. So I'm gonna add one here as well. So the UV distortion icon type. And it's called this the intensity again. And there we go. So default zero. Let's turn this into a slider actually. I just really like sliders because they look very organized and that's why I like them. Let's hit save, Let's see what it does. It's probably gonna go completely bonkers or nothing at all. One of those two. That's like a default value for for making shaders, nothing at all happens, that's okay. So let's actually add a little more distortion. You can see things are starting to actually happen. Okay, this is way too much, but you can see what's happening, right? So I'm gonna set this a little bit higher. You get even more distortion. I like that. Let's lower down the intensity. So I need to need to have like add this dance between the speed here and my intensity. So I'm gonna say 0.1 maybe. A little bit less. Let's actually do 0 0.005. Now, if you look again over here, if you look closely again to this part of here, you won't be able to find one similar wave at all. So it's now completely distorted because we set it to one, but it does create a really nice effect where you just have this idea of actual water. And I really like this technique, this cheating method, I stopped really cheating, right? But it just gives a little bit more control of the actual distortion and it just adds this watery feeling to it. And I actually really like that. Okay, we are getting close here. So this is gonna be, wow, this is gonna be a big graph. This is gonna be in my normals. I'm gonna group them, group them. I'm gonna call this normals, there we go. Let's just align it, no, let's not align it. There you go. So as you may have noticed though, we don't have any opacity yet. So let's do that next. So if you again look at the alert that we created before, this already has four values, right? So it already has the alpha. So I could do again, I could just say, I wanna split my alpha. Or I just wanna split my four outputs here into four separate ones. And then I could just grab the alpha and put it in my alpha. And then we can actually use the values from our color picker to use that as the alpha for my actual water. Let's see if it actually works. Okay, so watercolor here, completely, oh, completely transparent as you can see, you can see through it, so maybe a little bit less here. And let's not make it, let's make it a little bit more bluish maybe. There you go. And then the darker color here is also make it a little bit more bluish, maybe a little bit less. So this is like opaque and this is fully transparent. So I kind of like to have my like deep water a little bit less transparent, so a little bit more opaque here. There we go. 
and we can see through it. So it's now opaque. Again, the colors that we add actually also add to the, um, the visual cues that we're, that we're getting. That's why it looks really dark. But it does look pretty good though. It does look pretty good. Awesome. So right now we have our normals, we have our depth test. So let's see what else we can do. But well, we can also add a little bit more foam on the edges, right? So let's do the foam on the edges together now as the last thing that we're gonna do today. And what I wanna do is I wanna base this on my depth, right, that we've done before. So that means that if there's like a shallow water, I wanna have more foam. If the water is deep, I don't wanna have any foam or less foam. So we're gonna like reuse several things here from our actual depth test. But first, let's actually think about it, right? So for our foam, we need a couple of things. First thing that I'm probably gonna need is a texture. So I'm gonna add a foam texture map to that one. Then I'm gonna need something like a tiling over here again. So I'm gonna say foam texture tiling. We're probably also gonna need a speed so we can, can control how fast the actual foam is traversing. So let's float foam speed. Speed. There we go. I also want to have like a intensity or strength or opacity, whatever we want to call it. I'm going to say float intensity. And I want to be able to control like how far from the edges we want to have foam. So I'm also going to add here a oh, foam distance. I should probably call this a foam intensity and not a float. Okay, so let's just get things in here. The first thing I want to need here is my texture map. Again, I need to sample this. Same thing before, and I want to actually change the UVs here again because I want to offset it. So I'm also going to need a tiling and offset here. Again, should be similar to everything that we've done before. So I'm going to plug this into my UV. I'm going to grab my tiling over here. I'm going to plug it into my tiling. Let's set the default value to something like one by one. Otherwise, it's going to be stretched out. I really don't want that. So let's put it like that. There we go. And then again, we want to like offset this on a certain range. So again, we're going to do the same thing here with the speed. We're going to multiply this again with time. Something that we've done before. I'm going to reuse my time here again. And again, I want to be able to switch between the actual axis. Let's move this. So I'm going to copy paste these again. There we go. And in X and in Y. Now we can actually use this as our offset. Now I can hit save, but nothing's gonna happen, right? Because the entire texture is not plugged in. So I'm gonna not do that right now. So we're just gonna move on. So I wanna be able to test right if the edges are visible or not visible. So I'm gonna use some part from here again. So the first thing I wanna do is grab my distance, which is the same thing as my water depth, right? It's pretty much the same thing. So we're gonna copy paste, pretty much the same thing as we done over here. So first thing I wanna do here is add it. I'm gonna do an add, so I'm gonna grab my distance here and my alpha again for my split. I'm gonna plug that into A, and there we go. Let's give it a second here, so actually, thank you. Let's organize this, there we go. Next step would be to subtract the multiply from the add. So subtract, but the only thing to keep in mind is right now we're doing it the other way around. So the add is gonna go into A and the multiply is gonna go into B, right? Not like this. So if you actually turn, uh, turn these around, you get a different color. So you get black and white, or white and black. Depends how you want to look at it. Okay, then we want to multiply this again, right? So I'm just following this line here. In this case, we want to do it with the intensity. I'm going to do that as well here, the intensity. I have one here, foam intensity. I'm going to plug that in. There we go. Next step is to clamp it again. So we're just going to hit clamp. I'm going to put that in here. There we go. Okay. So now we're gonna do a simple trick. This is actually really fun to do. So I'm gonna actually multiply, multiply my clamp output with one channel of my texture. You're like, what, what, why? I'm just gonna grab my red channel, right? And let me actually explain this because this is actually a bit of a optimization trick that you can do. So um, foam is pretty much always white, right? So what we can do, right? If you just take one value, let's just say we take the value from red, I'm gonna plug it into something and with value of 0 0.5. So this is now a factor one, right, or float. Now if you turn this into a factor four or a factor three, so we're gonna add more slots, it's just gonna copy paste this value over here and put it into the next component. 
So let's say this is gonna be, this is, let's say this is the X, this is the Y, and this is the Z. So it's just gonna copy this value over here, so you get 0 0.5 here as well. And again, also in Z, so you also get 0 0.5. So that means it's gray, right? The water is, the color is actually gray. So if this, this would be like one, so if it turns into one, this would be one, this would be one. So you have a white color. So we just use one channel and just turn it into, like copy paste them into the other components of our factor and we get one simple color from black to white because that's all I need for foam, right? Since it's only black and white. Okay. So we're gonna multiply these together and then we're gonna blend our foam with our actual water. So I'm going to have a blend here again. So my color here, my actual color is going to be in my base and this is going to be in my blend. So this is now four, right? So that means that the same value is being put into all components that we've added of our blend node. Oh, let's do it like this. And this should go into our base color. Now I just want to set the actual mode here as well to screen. So that means that all the black values will get deleted and only the white ones will be saved visible. Let's hit save here. Let's go back to our water and see what actually happens. It's compiling, it's not crashing. <laughs> if you're wondering, there you go. So right now, since this is my fifth attempt, I already have the values over here. So you can now just plug in your actual foam texture. This is when I had a foam here. Tiling, I've set it to 25. You can set it a little bit bigger, smaller, whatever. And then the speed here controls the actual speed. And then intensity. Right, you can only go from zero to one. And then this distance is how far the foam is actually visible. Now we actually have like a thing now for free. So we actually have one, like two birds with one stone. So since this is based right on my depth, right? And so the, the distance between my water texture, water mo material model and the actual object behind it. Since the depth here is very small, so it's gonna be very um, black, I think. That means that we're gonna have more foam than the actual water itself. So we get like two birds and one stone for free, like a double whammy, which I really, really like. So next video, right, we're gonna do a vertex displacement. We're gonna do refractions. We're gonna, we're gonna tweak a little bit with the actual smoothness. So it's gonna be a little bit more re uh, realistic and we're gonna add a blur to this as well. But that's gonna be next video. So for now, I wanna say thank you very much for watching this. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And for now, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video.